Hello and welcome to Infinity. I'm going to do a bit of an edit now, starting from a raw file and using a number of the 1.8 um, new things that were brought in to kind of show them in action that they're, they're, there's something there which I find useful. There's always more things you're ever going to use because it's such a powerful and wide product. So I'm not a graphics artist, really. I am more of a photographer. So anyway, here's one of my photographs. This is Foy in Cornwall. Uh, it was it was just along the front, just a picture, nothing spectacular. It's rather annoying, specular highlights there. And the first thing I'm going to do here, look at the histogram, look at this. This is kind of like it's all kind of underexposed there, so I'm trying to account for things like this. But all I'm going to do here is slide the exposure up, and it stretches out the histogram, so I'm getting back more here. Bring it back a little bit, oh, too much there. Don't get it, this, this thing too white here. Anyway, and then I'm going to go to the Lens tab here. And this is new, because this here then is this automatically try to pick up the lens from your camera. My camera is up here, it's a little compact. It's a that one, it's a little Sony camera, and here it recognizes that it's the, the Mark III, but mine's the Mark V, but it's the same lens as the Mark III, and that's all it needs to know. And if you click on that, you've got a whole bunch of other things you can do here, you know, recent ones you've used, you can mark things as favorites and and so on, and detected ones and so on. So it's pretty, pretty comprehensive in what that does. That's quite a lot. So now I need to, first of all, I'm going to take this off because this, this is done automatically. But if I take it off, and why would I want to do that? Because there's more detail here, which is the fact of being cropped out. Because what it's done is it straightened things up and then cropped out anything that was not there. But Affinity Photo can do other things as well. So this is curved here. So the first thing I'm going to do is do, a bit, do the curving stuff to straighten up the curve. So I'm going to pull this one until it that line there, which is near the edge, looks straight again. So I've got this pin cushion here. Also, I need to straighten it up a bit. I'm going to hit Control single quote, which brings up a grid. And then I'm going to rotate it until it's vertical in the middle of the picture. So where's that? That's that's about OK, because that's tilted this one back this way, so it matches the one this way. So now when I do a vertical tilt here, I can get this back again and maybe a different little bit of rotate back that way. So you have to adjust these until it it looks about right. The art control single quote again gets that off. But I'm just going to now go straight into develop. And that fairly quickly switches over to that. Now I could crop into all this here, but I'm going to see how good it is at doing this automatic filling in. So I'm going to go to select, select alpha range and select partially transparent because alpha is about transparency. So it selects those bits around the edge. Then edit and in paint. Well, let's see what happens here and see how good it is at guessing. It'd be cute if it got that bit with the buildings and things, wouldn't it? And there we go. Now it's, it's, it's got a bit down here, but that's gone a bit funny there. So I'll hit Control D to do that. I could go in and sort of fake a bit in more that I'm just going to crop that out for now. So I'm just going to go to somewhere where it looks reasonable. There we go. And I'm going to come up a little bit at the bottom here. A little bit of the edge here is fine. And yeah, that'll do. So right, we've got the picture here now. So I'm going to address that. I'm just going to do something about that. Sorry, it's just looking a bit, you know, it's just the light on the water. So I'm going to use the in painting brush and just paint over that. Oh, and then figures out how to fix that. That's actually pretty good. So I'll hit Control Zero to go back out again. So now let's do something 
that uh, is it's been restored. I, I, I gave them a nag and they were very kindly put back. This is the HSV checkbox here. And let's have a look at what it does because normally if I do turn up the saturation and luminosity here, it's the, you know, luminosity in particular, look at this, it just sort of goes blah white a bit. But if I check the HSV box, when I turn this up here, it effectively, it, this becomes a, this is a black control. And this is removing the blacks from the picture. So you go all the way up, and there's no blacks, which is kind of useful because you can go somewhere there and then you can blend it. And if I go to soft light, that's kind of warming it up nicely. If I turn up the saturation a bit, that's going to warm it up a little bit bit more again maybe a little bit much there can bring these back down again but it certainly made that a lot a lot nicer also but in doing this i've kind of made the the water a little bit shiny there so i'm gonna want to take that off so i'm going to go to the this one up here which is the selection brush and this has got a new thing here soft edges and that's checked there it will stop it being a bit crunchy so I click on but not I don't have that if I say going in here and I paint along the edge here then if you look right into that it's it's literally uh, if I hit Q for quick mask you can see there along there it's a very crunchy kind of line uh, which is easy to see when you're making adjustments so hit Control D and I just turn on the soft edges and I paint along here again then when I do a Q for quick mask, you can see there the edges now are softer. You know, it's got a little bit of feathering on it, which is nice just to be able to do that. Q for quick mask, turn that off. Um, I'm just going to paint around the edge here. Now, if I select that, it'll crunch. That's better. You have got to have the layer selected if you want it to. Snap to edges, then Alt click to take things off there and I've got this here again so that's good that'll do that's fair enough I'm not gonna mess around with that because now I've selected this I want to put on onto the HSL layer there I've actually a black bit, bit here to remove the HSL from that so I go to the channels tab down here where it says pixel selection I'm going to right click on that and say create spare channel and then I can hit Control D to get rid of the marching ants, don't need that anymore. Right click on that and say load to HSL shift alpha and now what it's done is applied it to that but it's got it the wrong way around. It's, it's keeping the water and reverting the bit at the top. So if I hit Control I that reverts that, inverts that mask. Now the water as it was not so shiny but the warming is happening there in the rest of the picture. Now then, let's go in a little bit closer on some of the things here. So I'm going to look up here. I've got a bit of the sky and things up here. And there's a bit of noise in the sky. So I'm going to put a little bit, before I do sharpening, I'm going to put a little bit of denoise into it. And you usually don't need much. If I go up here, around about 10%. And look, it's, it's, it's tidied up quite nicely. But it's softened uh, some of this here. So I'm then going to go click the layer again to make sure it goes in the right place. And go to the, where is it? Unsharp mask. Because what they've done is they've done a lot of work on improving the threshold, which was pretty much useless before. But it's a very subtle tool. Because let's go in a little bit closer here. When I do a radius up here, typically on the unsharp, you're going to do, I seldom go past one, control it more then with a factor. And if I turn this up, I'm going to increase a bit there. I don't stop when I get into too much in the way of halos, but look at what's happened up here. This is all rather crunchy, though I've, this is nicely sharpened. This is, you know, I don't want that. So if I turn the threshold up, just a tiny, tiny amount. Look at the way it's fixing this up here whilst keeping this down here. So typically under 10%. You seldom go any more than that for the threshold. But that, that's been done nicely now, so that's working okay. 
So I'm going to hit Control Zero and back out again with that. And I'm going to put on a hit onto a, just a white background with a little bit of a border around it. So I'm going to click on this here. No, no, before that I'm just going to put a put a bit of vignette in. Um, and I can do that with the Nick filters, which has been far better integration now. That works just fine. And uh, Nick and Serif, they seem to know each other technically now, so they each one is advertising that they work with the other. So that's good. If I use a, a, a plugin, then it would apply it only to this layer here, and it wouldn't take an account of these things here. So to do that, I've got to do a layer merge visible which just takes these and copies a new layer above which contains all of these adjustments here. So I could I could leave that there or I could delete it. It makes no difference because I'm now working on a new effectively flattened image. So I'm going to go to Filters, Plugins, Nick Collection here, and I'll go to Color Effects. And this gives a whole bunch of things that you can do um, this is just like, there's absolutely lots of, of additional things here. So this extends Affinity quite a lot. And I'm just going to use the vignette filter there. And it, you can use different shapes here uh, within this and use the sliders then to adjust it, it to how you like it. Uh, maybe I'll make this one really much better bigger like that and turn down the opacity so you get just a subtle vignetting effect so it just kind of holds the eye in say okay and that saves the image all the way back again and there it is it just goes straight into that layer you haven't got any adjustments on it although of course you can undo it and still go backwards so there we go so now let's do this this other one so i'm going to say file new and this is an absolutely new thing here. So setting up a, a just a blank one, particularly if you're doing graphics, then this is really handy. So what I'm going to take, um, I don't know the aspect ratio, but I will just for now say this is A4. I'll make it uh, uh, on the orientation, a landscape one, and say create. And that creates myself a new one here. It appears up here on the tab. And I'll go back to the old one here. I'll just say Control a Control C to copy and then go onto this one and Control V to paste this in. Then go to the move tool and I'm going to squeeze these and drag them around the place. So I'm using this to set a nice border on this. So that's got that in about right. And I can actually I can drag this around a bit and it will snap to the lines, those green and red lines to give it a border. Or I can just keep on the green one to go up there and I can use the crop tool now just to tidy it up so it's the same thing all the way round. So there we go. There's an edit trying to cover a number of the effects that we can like, unnew within version 1.8 of Affinity Photo. Thank you very much for watching.